there was fight between Hindus and Muslims. So what is the meaning of this fight? <laughs> Actually, when one is God conscious, he knows God, that where is the chance of fighting? Jasadevi uh, Parav. Because one should be, if actually one is God conscious, Jasasti Bhakti Bhagavati Akinchana, the very literature gives us information that actually if one is devotee of God, God is one. God cannot be two. It is not that Hindus have got one God and Christians have got another God. No. God cannot be two. Then there cannot be any competition of God. I am God. Just like nowadays it has become a fashion. So many gods, rascals are coming. I am God. He says, I am God, I am God, I am God. But how many gods are there? No. God is one. Eka Brahma Vitya Nasti, that is the beating in Jagat. Just like the sun, sun is one. From a practical example. <laughs> you cannot say that this is American sun and this is Indian sun or it is African sun. Sun is one. <laughs> See, in the creation of God, is one, and it is so powerful. Uh, sun is one of the creation of God. There are millions of suns. We can see one only. Uh, so, if one sun created by God can do so much work, can distribute so much heat and light, just imagine how much powerful is the creator of the sun? This is common sense. Eh? So, we get information from Bhagavad Gita. Rupana will continue. Aham sarvasya pravava matta sarvam pravastate iti matya bhajanti maam buddha bhava samandita aham sarvasya prabhu. What about we see? What about there is? There are emanations from God. That is the Bhādhita Vedānta Sutra also. Uh, simple. If you want to know what is God, the Vedānta Sutra informs us very, in two words, very simple. God, or the absolute truth, is that uh, who is the source of everything. Janma Adhasya the original source from whom everything is coming is God. Very simple definition. Anyone can understand. If you find out, that is our philosophy means to inquire. Adhata Brahma Jigasa, to inquire. Now, this life, this human form of life, is especially meant for inquiring about the absolute truth. In animal life we cannot do There are big, big animals, tigers and lions and elephants, and big, big trees also. They are also living entities. 
uh, big, big well fields within the ocean, uh, very gigantic, uh, big, big mountains. Mountains they have got also, like, uh, but they cannot inquire about God. There is nothing. You can inquire about God in this human form of life. Therefore, in any civilized society, there is an inquiry of God that is called religion. One may be, or in degrees, there may be different. Just like in India, uh, they are also making inquiry. Not now. Not at the present moment, they have given up. Uh, but uh, hundreds and thousands of years ago, uh, not thousands, uh, even two hundred years ago, India was so inquisitive about inquiring about God. Uh, even one Chinese gentleman, uh, he has written one book, Philosophical, that is recommended. I forgot the name, I <coughs> the book, uh, that is studied in New York University in the religion class. In that book he has written that if you want to know about God, if you want to know about religion, then you must go to India. Yes, that's a fact. Because in no other country, uh, uh, the great sages and especially persons engage themselves so seriously about understanding God. Therefore, the Vedanta Sutra is there. Uh, so, we should know that God is one. God is not different. There, there cannot be any competition of God. Uh, there cannot be any superior to that God. Therefore, God is called the Great. God is called the Absolute. So, religion means, first class religion means, how the followers have developed the understanding of God. That is first class religion. Uh, not that how many uh, animals we can satisfy or how many times so many rituals and so many other things as there are in every religion. Uh, but the, we have to test by this reason. Polena polichiyas, everything is like uh, we have studied so much a scientific man, but there is examination. Uh, if one passes the examination, then it is understood that he has studied nicely. That is our common sense. In his school, colleges, everywhere. Uh, if I cannot pass the examination, and if I advertise myself, oh, I have studied this, I have studied that, the world is very well. Uh, suppose a man is doing business. If we see that by doing business he has acquired some money, has become rich, then we can understand that he is successful business. Uh, but if he is a poor man and he says, I have done this, I have done that, I have done that, he can say so. But we want to know by the reason. Palena that is. Oh, a Sanskrit version, but we have to understand by the reason. Palina, what result you have got? What the value of your uh, uh, examination paper is, your, how much mark you have received? <coughs> Similarly, we can declare ourselves very religionist, great religionist, follower of great religion. But what is this? But how much you have developed your sense of God consciousness 
how much you have learned to love God. Just like in all Western countries, Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed His life for God. And he was charged that he was preaching something blasphemy. But he was a devotee of God. He, he preached to the people that there is kingdom of God, you love God and go to the kingdom of God. Simple truth. That is the actual business of human life. This human life is meant for understanding God, because we are part and parcel of God. And we have forgotten. With the same thing, I have given several times example. A, a, a person, he belongs to a rich father, but somehow or other he has left home and is loitering. In your country, this example is very applicable. So many boys, they have left their uh, rich father, rich family and lying down on the street. I think, why? Maybe some reason. But he is not expected to lie down on the street because he has got rich father, at least rich nation, your American nation. Uh, similarly, when we become puzzled and confused and want to live independently, of God, the richest Father. Who can be richer than God? God means the richest. Nobody can be richer than Him. That is another definition of God. Oisadjasa, samagrasa, bijasa, jasasa, sriya, jnana, bhaira, gayascaiva, sara, iti, bhagangana. Bhava, bhava means fortune. One who is opulent with six kinds of fortunes. Uh, we don't understand it very well. Just like in our, in this material world, <coughs> if one man is very rich, he is attracted. Uh, everybody uh, speaks about him. Uh, even he is a nonsense number one. If he has got money, everyone speaks about him. In the, at least in this age it is going on. Nobody considers of anything, but if somehow or other one becomes very rich, he becomes a popular figure. Uh, so God must be richest. Here, within this material world, we can claim, I am richer than that, but somebody is richer than me. I cannot claim that nobody is richer than me. That is not possible. We shall find out le less uh, rich than me, and we can find out uh, more uh, rich than ourselves. Two things we can. Uh, but uh, when you come to God, you will find nobody is richer than Him. Therefore God is called great. God is great. Similarly, not only in riches, Oisabja, Sar Samatrasa, Vidyasa, in power also. Oisadjasa, Samadrasa, Vijasya, Jasasa, in reputation also. Uh, in fame. <coughs> Just like everyone. It may be you belong to some religion, I belong to. But everyone knows that God is great. That is reputation. Oisadjasa, uh, Samadrasa, Vijasya, Jasasa. And C, C means beauty. Uh, God is the most beautiful. Uh, just like, see Krishna here, we have got Krishna's figure here. How beautiful he is. Uh, God must be, he is young, always. Uh, an old man cannot become beautiful. Uh, that is stated in the Brahma Sangita. Abdaita Yachita Anadi Ananta Rupam 
आद्यम पुराण पुरुष नव जोवन च दिस डिस्क्रिप्शन आद्यम पुराण ही इज ओरिजिनल पर्सन द ओल्डेस्ट ऑफ ऑल बट ही इज नव जोवन जस्ट लाइक अ ब्यूटीफुल बॉय से 16 और 20 इयर्स ओल्ड द लेडी इज ब्यूटीफुल द मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल एंड द मोस्ट वाइज ज्ञान Uh, nobody can be wiser than God. These are the descriptions given by Parashar Muni, father of Vyasa. Oi sadya sa samadya sa bhita sa jasa sa sriya gyan abhiraga and at the same time renounced. The God has created and uh, this universe. God has created the cosmic manifestation in innumerable universes. But he is not interested in it. He is interested. He is created. He has given us facility to live here. But he is not coming here to enjoy this. But he has got better. Or he doesn't care about all these opulences. That is another qualification. So this human form of life. is meant for understanding god and scientifically uh, with full knowledge uh, that is described in the shrimad bhagavatam therefore we are preaching this bhagavad discourse uh, in the beginning of shrimad bhagavatam uh, what is the nature of god that has been described janmad dasyata annaya itaratascha arthishu avigya sara uh, God, God is cognizant. He knows everything. He is a sentient being, not like a dead stone. Uh, if God is not sentient being, if God is not a person, how so many powerful person, sentient person coming from Him? If the father is not intelligent, how the sons and daughters can become intelligent? Uh, A dog cannot give birth to an intelligent person. A person who is intelligent, he can give birth to intelligent children. This is our practical experience. Uh, therefore, this description of God, we should just samakras, we just 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 see. We should try to understand what is God. If you can find out a person who is superior in everything, in wealth. In strength, in beauty, in fame, in knowledge, in announcement, uh, he is God. Don't capture any fourth-class God. Uh, if you are intelligent, try to understand what is the meaning of God and try to understand. So uh, here in the Simadu Bhagavatam, it is said. That that is first class religion. What is that? Uh, which uh, gives opportunity to the followers how to love God. Why should we not? If God is great, uh, if our Father is so great, why should we not love? We flatter uh, somebody here having a say um, a few millions of dollars. We flatter. And who is the richest of all? Uh, we should not love him. Why? What is the reason? And actually, he is supplying everything. Eko bohunaan vidhadhati kama. He is supplying all necessities of life to all living things, beginning from the ant to the elephant. <coughs> uh, so why not to us? We have dedicated our whole life. For the service of God, if God is giving food to the ant, to the elephant, why not to us? So don't think that you will starve in God consciousness. You will never starve. Go on with your duty, loving God and preaching love of God. You will always be opulent. Be sure. A ordinary man, if you work for him, he gives you salary. 
good salary. And we are working for God, we go on great salary. <laughs> Imagine, if you are really lover of God, worker for God, don't think of your economic condition. It will be support. In the Bhagavad Gita it is said, Yoga Khemam Mahamaham, he personally supplies whatever necessities are there. Just like a father, it's a small child who is completely dependent on the parents. The parents look after the comfort. The child does not ask the parent because he cannot speak out. So he simply depending on God, simply depending on parents. Simply, if you simply depend on God, there is no question of your economic uh, problem. Be sure. Uh, this is common sense. Uh, so there is scarcity of devotees of God at the present moment. Uh, people have rejected God. Somebody is saying God is dead. Somebody is accepting a rascal as God. Somebody is declaring himself as God. No. Try to understand God scientifically and become a devotee, a lover of God. Your life will be successful. That is Krishna consciousness movement. It is not that my God, your God, this religion, that religion. God is one and religion is one. What is that religion? Love of God. That's all. There is no other second religion. This is the religion. Therefore, God comes and says, Saru Dharman Paritajamam Ekam Saralam Bhaja. This is religion. Don't be after so-called...